all right hello and welcome back everyone so uh in the previous video this is where we left off we have our second order ode and we have our two boundary conditions so in this video we're just going to perform the integration use our boundary conditions to get the constants of integration and just uh, get the velocity profile okay so okay give me one second and yeah ddr r dv z dr okay and that's gonna equal now delta p delta l delta p over l is gonna be equal to p out minus p in pressure at the outlet minus pressure at the inlet divided by the length it has to be a negative number all right and i'll show you why so let's see we're gonna have delta p del delta p over l times mu divided by mu times r all right so <clears throat> excuse me upon doing our first integration upon doing our first integration we have delta p over 2 mu l r squared plus c1 our first constant of integration all right and this is a this is a good point to use our first boundary condition so our first boundary condition says that at r equals zero the derivative is going to equal zero okay no flux okay no flux at center condition no flux at center boundary condition okay so if you're working in cylindrical or spherical coordinates and you have and uh, the value of the flux at r equals zero is going to be zero because all of the fluxes are vector quantities and they're going to cancel each other out with that said we're going to be left with c1 equal to zero okay very nice so let's so moving on moving on we get dvz dr is equal to <coughs> delta p over 2 mu l r all right i just skipped some algebraic steps and now our final integration upon performing our final integration our velocity profile the velocity in the z direction as a function of r let's switch colors now is going to be equal to well that's a weird looking r my bad my bad that's a weird looking r and now it looks better here we go and that's going to equal delta p over 4 mu l times r squared r squared all right there we go plus the second constant of integration okay and this is the point and this is the point where we're going to use our second boundary condition use bc2 and what is our bc2 at r equals uppercase r all right this is the radius of pipe by the way this is the radius of our pipe. So, at the wall, at r equals r, the velocity is going to be equal to zero. No slip. Okay, fluids attached to a stationary solid boundary are going to be stationary. So, with that said, <clears throat> excuse me, zero is equal to delta p over 4 mu l r squared plus c2 there we go and c2 comes out to be negative negative delta p over 4 mu l r squared and there we have it we have our second constant of integration so ladies and gentlemen our velocity profile our velocity profile is going to be when we combine both constants of integration one being zero and, uh, and the other one being uh, this boy right here we're going to get okay let's see delta p over 4 mu l lowercase r squared minus delta p over 4 mu l r squared all right 
So now at this point, <clears throat> this right here is good enough. We have our velocity profile. All right, give yourself a pat on the back. You have, we found out the velocity profile. Yay. So what's next? Let's say I want to find out the maximum velocity, right? And the maximum velocity, for that, I'll have to set the derivative equal to zero. Okay, now I'm just using some calculus. Delta P over 4, 2 mu L, R. And once I set that equal to zero, and solve for R, it turns out that the maximum velocity is going to occur at R equals zero. So V max, the maximum velocity is just going to be equal to negative delta P over 4 mu L. All right, give me a second. Over 4 mu L R squared. So this right here is my, <coughs> excuse me, maximum velocity. Very good. What else do I want, do I want to find? I can find the overall volumetric flow rate. Okay. I can find the overall volumetric flow rate. And for that, Q, Q is going to be my volumetric flow rate. And that's going to be equal to the integral of the velocity profile over the cross-sectional area. And the cross-sectional area in cylindrical coordinates is going to be, let's see, 0 to 2 pi, 0 to capital R, Vz, R, R, D, R, D theta. This comes out to be 2 pi times 0 to R, and, all right, what was my velocity profile again? Okay. Delta P over 4 mu L, R Q minus delta P over 4 mu L, R <coughs> squared times R, dr. All right. So let's see if I can perform this integration without messing up. 2 pi. All right, let's see. So this becomes delta P over R to the power 4, 4, 16 mu L. All right, that looks good. No, maybe not. Uh, yeah, yeah, that looks good. That looks good. Minus delta P R squared R squared over 8 <coughs> mu L goes from 0 to R. Hmm. I just want to make sure I perform this integration correctly. And it looks like I did. I did. I, yeah, I know some I remember some integral calc. This is just going to become 2 pi times delta P R4 16 mu L minus delta P R to the power 4 8 mu L. So now right now, <coughs> excuse me, right now we're just grinding through the algebra. Okay, so this is going to come out to be 2 pi, 16 mu L. Okay, okay, let's see, let's see. Okay. So, yeah, finally we're here. The volumetric flow rate is going to be 2 negative 2 pi times the pressure drop times the radius of the pipe raised to power 4 divided by 16 mu L. And if we simplify this, we get the volumetric flow rate being equal to pi times delta P r to the power 4 divided by mu L. 8 mu L. Okay. All right, we have our volumetric flow rate. Good.
and if you wanna if you want to find the mass flow rate you just have to multiply the volumetric flow rate by the density all right so yeah <clears throat> there we have it we use the navier stokes equation to derive the velocity profile so let me just see where we start off okay so we start off with our assumptions steady state laminar flow and incompressible fluid we reduce the continuity equation and all right we reduced each one of each component of the navier stokes equation this is what we got from r and theta and usually the navier stokes equation the component in which we have flow that's the one that's going to be the most interesting so in our case that was the z component and as you can see here upon simplification this is what we got this was our final ordinary differential equation okay and we used our two boundary conditions perform the integration and blah math 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 more math more math more math oh we got our velocity profile and then we got our by setting the derivative equal to zero we were able to solve for the maximum velocity and we were also able to solve for the volumetric flow rate by performing integration over the cross-sectional area so yeah <clears throat> Thank you so much for sticking till the end, guys, and I hope this was helpful.